Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project, and you may recognise where I am. Yes, back in the original SRP HQ. I finally relocated it after two years, and I'm just slowly putting it back to how it was a couple of years ago. It finally feels like I've come home. But more on that at a later date. Today, as you can see, I've got a rather eclectic collection of meat in front of me as you saw earlier I've got six pheasants hanging up I've also got a plucked duck I've got a big lump of pork shoulder and a nice big chicken so what you may ask am I going to be doing well let me tell you first of all I want to make a three bird roast for my mate and his family for Christmas so I will put a duck and a pheasant in a chicken, so they're all going to have to be boned out. We will just use the breasts off the duck and the pheasant, but the legs off the duck and the pheasant and the other ones, we're going to mix with some pork and we're going to make some beautiful uh, herby game sausages to put in the centre of this three bird roast, you know, like a traditional sausage stuffing, and then we're going to make some little links of pigs in blankets so yeah to reiterate a three bird roast stuffed with game sausage mix and pigs in blankets right where to start so first thing i think we need to do is prepare these pheasants now loads of you have seen me prepare pheasants before so we're going to do it the really really simple way as i just want the breasts and the legs we're going to cheat we're just going to skin it, I'm going to breast it out, take the legs off, job is a good one. So, so, so simple, just pull the feathers away, just like that. These were shot four days ago, these will be absolutely perfect. Get them feathers off your fingers, what a ball ache. And then just simple in, get the meat off. Like I said, two of these breasts will go into my three bird roast and then all the leg meat, all the trimming will go to make a fantastic game sausage with stuffing and then the game sausage wrapped in lovely smoked streaky bacon for the pigs in blankets. So, this ain't pretty but it's a case of we just want the meat so just snapping the legs out very simple trace it along and that gives you the legs now you don't want to see me do the others so by the magic of camera I will have these pheasants done quicker than you can say knife so, within two shakes of a thingy ma jigs, what's it? Pheasant is done. Now, I know I said I wanted two breasts to go in the middle of that chicken. But I think I'm going to try three. Now, like all shot game, it's a lottery. You don't know what you're going to get. So, it's just a case of looking over it. Now, I don't want those little fillets. I'm going to keep... This one I think, just trim off the funk, just keep nice thick fillets to stick in the middle, that looks a good one, 
We'll have the little mini fillet off that. Keep that one. Now to make these sausages, we need two pound or just under a, a kilo of pheasant meat. But I want to definitely use these thighs, so just quickly bone them out. Don't take very long. And then I will make up the, the rest of the weight with those pheasant breasts until it comes up to two pound. And then we will add a pound and a half of that pork joint. And that is basically our meat ready to make sausages with. Just gotta weigh out our rusk, our seasoning, get our water. Job is a good one. Just ripping through these thighs. And the drumsticks, obviously they will go to those lovely pheasant bonbons. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put the link in the bottom here, in the show card, in the description even, and then I will also put it up at the end. So, I'm just taking off all the mini fillets to start with, because I don't think we'll need too much. Then again, I could be wrong. What do I know? There's a couple of pheasant breasts still left in the tray. Drumstick in a thigh. Just nipping that thigh bone out real quick. Bit of a slash job. Shameful, dear boy. Shameful. So as you can see, some of these, quite a bit of blood meat. So they can go and be trimmed out and used in a stew or something. Let's see what that pile weighs there before we go any further. Before we go any further, do you love me? So like a donkey, I didn't press record, but all I've done is taken those lovely duck breasts off that wild mallard. Wild mallard, absolutely gorgeous, but it's a big bone to meat ratio, but the little nuggets you do get, absolutely superb. Of course, use the legs for comfy. Next, we need a pound and a half of pork and we want to get as much fat into it as possible. So just give it a trim. This is a shoulder of pork, one of the finest cuts for making sausages. The rest will just go for making plain sausages, but I just need that amount to make those wonderful game ones. So just trimming up any nasty bits. Like I said, I'm after the fatty parts because that pheasant can be a bit dry. So again, just looking through, may take a bit more from the fatty part here. In fact, I'm just gonna go like that and just skin this shoulder out. That's what we want, that all important back fat where this goes into the neck. And I want a pound and a half of this. There's my scales. So we'll give it some of that first. And that. I'm gonna take another little bit of the fatty part off. And I think we'll be there or thereabouts that on for good luck. Well, the rest of this pork will go for my other sausage making and I'm also going to be making some faggots so I want some pork for that. So while I've got it out I'm just going to quickly nip through it real quick. Knife almost horizontal. Just skinning that off. See that beautiful fat there. Fat is your flavor 
adds to the texture, keeps your sausage nice and moist. Right, that to be used for a later date, that to add to our pheasant breasts. So what we got so far, so we got our spare pork, we got our spare breasts, we got our two duck breasts, three pheasants, the meat ready to make some saucy songs. Next, we need to bone out the chicken. Onto the chicken, so we need to bone this out. Now I'm not decided if I want to keep any of the bones in to retain its shape. I may do, I'm not sure yet, so we'll just do it as if I would. So, leaving the wings on if I can, and maybe just take out the thigh bone, we could put some stuffing along that. So basically when it's tied up, it kind of looks chickeny, and then we may even go mad and put some bacon over it. Why not? It's Christmas, live on the edge, baby. So yeah, real simple. Just going through those leg joints. One, the, the ball joints. And then it's a case of following the rib cage down, dislocating the wing. Here come the ribs. And of course, want to be as careful as possible when we get to that breastplate. We don't want a hole in it. Not that it's a big deal. It's like I say, you know, anything could be remedied. So it's better to have a go and then not have a go at all and worry about what it's going to turn out like. You'll be surprised. Everything could be sorted out. So just finding that breastplate now. Just coming down it, that, that side's loose. And here we are, joining the other side. So it's almost like taking the breasts off, but in reverse. There's the wishbone. I shall deal with that later. So you want it, so it's pretty much just hanging and then you can just ease it away and then we can just take this bit out just like that and there we have our chicken ready to stuff just feeling for that wishbone in there how did we do yeah so what I'm thinking then, if we can keep the wings and we will just take out the thigh bone and that way we can kind of make it chicken shaped again. So just what I did on the pheasants, I'm just doing with the chicken, trying not to go through the skin obviously, but just scrape it down until you get to the bone and nip through simple that will give us some a cavity to put some more stuff in so I'm thinking stuffing pheasant stuffing duck stuffing in here it's gonna look pretty smoky baby so like I said then breasts stuffing and of course that will fill back out like that I'm thinking we fold these wings back in this will be nice and full then the legs will be full of stuffing as well we can kind of tie that like that maybe get some bacon over it and tie it into a lovely cylinder shape but yeah that is the plan Stan so I've disinfected me block then I just want to put this sausage meat through one time, then we'll add the seasoning. 
Work for me, baby. Sorted. Right, let me weigh out my seasoning. Now the seasoning I am using, again, is just a brilliant Western Fowler. If you can read that. Venison and game sausage seasoning. It's absolutely brilliant. I will put a link to their website in the description. Get on there. Say I sent you. They make the best. End of baby. Right. Weigh that out. Get it in there. Get the rust sorted. So we got our three and a half pound of meat. Two of that pheasant breast. One and a half fatty pork. Here, eight ounces of rusk, sausage making rusk. We're going to add to that a pound of water. So a pint. We're just going to let that inflate. This again will retain all your flavour, all that fat will give you that lovely texture. So we we'll just give that a minute to do its thing. Then you want two ounces of your seasoning of choice. Like I said, I'm using that brilliant Western Fowders. So herby, so tasty. And we put that pork in there. This should be a real good sausage. So just give it a little preliminary mix. Obviously we'll send the whole thing through the mincer one more time, but just get it in there. And this smells absolutely divine. This is gonna be a cracker. You know, when you cut into that three bird roast, layered with this stuff, you've got all that meat in there. What's not to love? So, two ounces in, right there. Give that a mix up, like that. A preliminary mix. Make sure we get it all off the bottom, that. Oh, it's just absolutely amazing. So, our rusk has inflated. So in with our meat. Now you can add a bit more water to this if it's a bit too stiff, if the mix is too stiff. But it doesn't matter at the moment because the first portion of this will be used as a stuffing. So just incorporating that rusk into the meat. So it's all pretty much one uniform color. Then we'll send it through the mincer. Done. Get your hands in again. Get a good bind on. And what I would do, take what I need for the three bird roast. Then I will let the rest of this mix down with a little water. And then we'll pipe them. Then tie them into little chipolatas. Roll them in beautiful smoked streaky bacon and there we have our piggies in blankets right i'm going to take that for now and work with that then we'll get old chicken back out and have a play okay then it's building time so what i'm going to do like i said is just get some of that and just fill in that cavity where the thigh bone was, just to give, a, just to give it a bit of shape back into the legs, and then we'll work on this. So I'm just going to put a little line of stuff in down the middle. Now. I may use all these. I may just use two. So if I put it that way, just fold them out there. And I'm just going to put a little bit more 
stuff in here. I think I'm going to lay the duck breasts. Actually, turn them over that way. And repeat with the other side. Now, you never really know how this is going to work out. You need to just fet a little bit. But I'm thinking something like that. Can't be doing with that bit of funk on there. I'll we'll get rid of it. Get rid of that little mini fillet as well. But that, I think, will do it. Just get a bit in there like that. Just lubricates it as well. Absolutely bonkers, I know. But we want to kind of fashion it up now. Offer it up. Offer it. Offer yourself to it. So I'm going to get my needle out. So by all means you can do this like a football, you know, stitch along, a blanket stitch. But I'm going to just suss it out first. Tie some little knots just to give it a bit of shape. And then we'll see how it looks. As long as this back is nicely sealed, that's the main thing. And when you're tying poultry, you want to get a big handful where there's a bit of fat as well and go through. So it's got a good anchor. along the back. I'll just put one in this bottom first. We can flip it over and manipulate it how we want it. Obviously cut all these strings. Once it's cooked it'll all bunch up and it'll hold absolutely perfect. So it looks a little bit mad at the moment, a bit franken chucking, but let's see what the crack is. So we flip her over, we put our wings back. So we need to tie that front end up, but as you can see, it's starting to look pretty, pretty cool. So look at that, absolutely stuffed, full of meat. So we just need to bring those legs in. We can go like that, like that. We can bring this round. Just underneath the wings. Just give that one of them. Retain that string. And then we can just give it a fettle. And I think I'm going to just lay some bacon over the top and tie a few strings around it. And the job is a good one. It's a good old streaky. Nice and thin actually, if you get that stuff from the supermarket. Purely because it's better for stretching out. I know I shouldn't be saying that as a butcher, but it'd be the truth. Stretch it out and then just put it across its back. Kind of dressing it up in bacon Lady Gaga style. 
one more this side then I'll be happy just like that now for the final part of the chicken nice and gentle the holding knot so we tie the knot we tie the locking knot we take the knot to the meat tie it off and it starts coming to shape just get one round here in fact you'll go through the leg it will all bring it together so through that one that pull out lock it look at that left handed And there we have it, one chicken stuffed with pheasant, duck and a homemade game sausage meat. Beautiful. So over to the sausage making table, get our mix in, what was left when we use that stuffing. It's gonna be a good four, four and a half pound here. Now what we want to do with these, because we're making chipolatas for pigs in blankets, is we don't want to stuff it too tight. Purely because we are going to be making small links. And the last thing we want is them to burst all over the show. Right, let's wind this bad boy in until a little bit of the mix comes out and the air bubble. Not coming through in a minute. Come on, you beauty. As you can see it coming down the nozzle. Lovely. Right. Thread our skins on. So these have been soaking in cold water and then just in some tepid water before we do the stuffing. Is that the start? Always a bit fiddly, these to start. Get some lube on. Always better with lube. Right, let's tie a knot in the one end. We'll start piping these beauties. So not too full. Make sure everything comes off nicely. And away we go. So nice and steady then with these. Don't need to go ripping through them. Letting it pretty much come off the nozzle on its own. Obviously some of these skins are wider in places than others. That's just life, baby. Just try and balance it all out. But it'll all come right when we do the linking Nice and steady. It's got thicker there, look. So we can just ease it off. Put more pressure on as we want. That's the beauty of these manual crankers. See, it's got wider again there. So I'm gonna take the pressure off and I can use that bit of slack when we tie them. So yeah. So we're going to make pigs in blankets, so you want quite a smallish sausage, but you don't want it too small. 
So I'm just pinching three off. Simple as. Start it, push it through. Now these are quite fiddly, so just take your time. They take some getting through. So we might just take the size up a little bit so we can manhandle them. Come on, you beautiful. See what I mean? You don't want them too tight. It will be a disaster. Oh, that was a bit generous. A bit generous. So I'm going to go through there like that. And then I'm going to go round. That one's way too big, so pinch some mixture out. I can go back in the barrel or make a patty with it. Tie that off like that. This knife here. There we have our sausages ready to wrap in bacon. Right, let's get some more done. So how good do they look, hey? These beautiful, beautiful chipolatas. I'll be honest with you, they're a little bit fresh yet to be doing this, but I just want to show you what we're doing. Very simple. Get yourself some bangers. Get some lovely smoked streaky bacon. Stretch it out. Nice and stretchy. Get one sausage and just wrap the beauty like that. I mean, you can use one rasher per sausage if you want to, but you don't want too much bacon on. I can't believe I just said that. Can you ever have too much bacon on? And that is how you make your pigs in blankets and your three bird roast for Christmas. This is a big boy so we can have a whole slice. Obviously that would be mine. Do a couple more and then we'll have a look at what we created. Which I think you'll agree, what we started with, that lump of randomness, pheasant, duck, chicken, some pork, 
has turned into something rather special. So there's our gamey pigs in blankets and here's our wonderful fuzz duckon ready for Christmas. Wow, not a bad job if I say so myself. Looking absolutely beautiful. Nice sprig of rosemary on there. That means it's an extra fiver when you buy them in your local butchers. So, if you've liked what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my beautiful face comes up down here. Also, catch me on my social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the Scott Reed Project. And if you feel like helping the channel along and sharing the love, do check out my Patreon page. Me, I'm going to go in and try a couple of these. This is for my mate. Yeah, it's for my mate. I could just ban that in the oven. Hmm. I couldn't do that to him. Take care, my friends. See you very soon.